Well, the summer is over. The August exams are done. We're getting into September, and many of you are probably thinking about your CFA journey and what's next for you. Some of you are registered for November. Some of you are thinking about 2025. So I want to introduce to you something that will be appearing on markmeldrum.com beginning September 9th. The financial modeling module begins. It's going to run 12 to 16 weeks. Uh, this is for anybody who has the applied level or who on markmeldrum.com has subscribed to the CFA plus option. The plus option gives you the applied level. We will be uh, modeling Costco and Canadian apartment REITs. We'll be modeling uh, two different companies. This is a U.S. GAAP company. This is an IFRS company. So we'll apply some of the things we learned in the CFA curriculum to these two companies. Um, we're going to start from basically a blank uh, worksheet and a 10K. So we're going to start by determining what data sources we need and we're going to set up Excel before you begin any kind of modeling, you have to set up your spreadsheet, uh, the layout that we need, getting the historical data in there. And throughout the course, uh, we'll be introducing some very advanced Excel techniques, some APIs uh, that are available so that you can import a whole bunch of historical data. I am not an Excel expert, so I have gotten another charter holder who has lots of experience with modeling and Excel. Uh, to demonstrate how to get those advanced techniques done. Uh, we're going to do a three statement model. The first pass for financial modeling is just modeling the company. The second pass, what we'll do after this 12 or 16, uh, 12 to 16 weeks are over, is we'll look at how do we begin to value this company? What are the valuation tools that we begin to use? That is the second part of this. You can think of that as a like a second semester. Uh, onto this one. Uh, uh, we're going to focus on uh, the three statement model and all the schedules, building the revenue schedule, expenses, a debt schedule. If there are leases, we'll model that. Taxes, working capital, depreciation and amortization, uh, which uh, models our PPE and our CapEx all at the same time, our equity, uh, and some data validation techniques. Uh, this is the financial analysis aspect of it. There are two parts to financial modeling. Number one is you got to understand the company. You got to understand the drivers of every line item on the balance sheet and on the income statement. And you have to figure out what relationship it has to other things, uh, what drives revenue, what drives expenses. And you have to think about those going forward. How do you think those are going to unfold? Once you have all of that, you got to put them in Excel. I'm going to show you how to use the functional approach to Excel. For any of you who have any computer science background at all, you'll understand functional programming. You have a computer program that runs. It does nothing. It calculates nothing. It modifies nothing. Every time something needs to be done, it's a function call. Same thing with modeling your balance sheet, the income statement, and the cash flow statement should calculate absolutely nothing. Every line item in your forecast, every cell should be a call to some schedule somewhere. So I'll show you how to set up uh, the functional approach. If you do this right um, and you balance when you build your model, when you change assumptions, you should always balance, always. Uh, we'll cover common commands that are used. Uh, look at best practices for building a uh, financial model. Best practices for the industry, when I talk about that. And advanced Excel uh, techniques as well. Here, we're going to rely on new voices uh, to get this done for you because while I'm an expert over here, uh, I'm pretty good at Excel. I am not an Excel expert. You got to bring people in for that. Okay, I'm going to make two promises uh, to you about the uh, financial modeling module. Uh, promise number one, uh, it is going to be more comprehensive versus other sources. Uh, that is CFAI. I've looked at three other sources, CFAI, and then um, there are two companies that start with Wall Street that do financial modeling. Uh, I'm sure you can Google them and figure out which ones they are. 
Uh, I've been through all of them. Uh, I've seen the practical skills module uh, at level one uh, four uh, that's offered uh, with CFAI. Uh, I had seen it before. Uh, so when I started watching it, I go, this is familiar. Um, this person who's doing it, I'm, I'm going to try not to say too many names to the person that's doing it. Um, if you're familiar with the person's name, go to YouTube and Google that person and you'll see that they've been uh, giving the same presentation for at least the last, at least the last eight years. Uh, it goes back to 2016. There's a, uh, a video online for CFA Nigeria, another one for CFA New Zealand, the same company, uh, the same data, and it's manufactured data. Uh, not saying that it's not worth going through. It's very basic. It's very, very basic. I can guarantee you we are way more comprehensive than that because point number one, we are not using manufactured data. I am throwing you into the messiness of the real world right away. Uh, for the Wall Street companies, the two of them that are out there, Wall Street something and Wall Street something else, one of them is not good at all. And the other one is pretty good. Uh, but has a lot of simplifying, uh, simplifying steps in there. I think they could be more rigorous than what they are, but I think they focus more on quantity and, and scope, trying to have as, as uh, many uh, models covered as possible. So they don't really dive a mile deep on, uh, on, any, uh, on any model, which is exactly what we're going to do. Uh, <clears throat> so we're never going to come across manufactured data. Uh, it is as messy as the real world because it is the real world no simple growth rate assumptions i have seen that used <clears throat> in both of these companies uh, where uh, revenue on this year revenue on this year calculate a growth rate forecast that going forward no that is useless it is uninformative and it's not very useful at all for anything uh, so we are not going to use any of that we will i shouldn't say we're never we will as our first pass use a simple growth rate then we're going to do it right and then we're going to compare what we got with the growth rate and we're going to see how much more you know now versus the growth rate and how much more useful it is and how much better it's going to be so uh, we will avoid these simplifying uh, steps a far heavier focus on the financial analysis aspect uh, when you are taking these financial modeling courses it is heavy on excel uh, but it's light on the inputs. It is, here's how you set it up in Excel. Here's how you model this. Here's how you build this schedule. Here's how you build that schedule. <clears throat> but the uh, if you don't have the right uh, thinking going in about how would you model, for example, Costco? How would you model membership revenue? How would you model merchandise revenue? Keep in mind, they keep opening stores. So you have a comparable and you have a growth rate uh, on top of that. How would you begin to think about modeling that? And things in the real world can get really complicated really fast. That's the wrong approach. We have to find the simplicity. Making something simple is hard. Making something complicated, that's easy. But then it's hard to maintain after. So we're going to look for the elegance in this. So we're going to have a far heavier focus on financial analysis. In other words, we're going to start from the 10k and a blank excel worksheet and we're going to uh, as if i were sitting right beside you and you're saying okay well what do i do first here's where we go let's go to this section let's read this let's make our notes let's think about how this what they're saying in here and how we would begin to model this if we had to i'm going to bring you to an institutional level ability and i say about 80 percent of the way there simply because we're not going to have access to certain resources that you would at an institutional level. We're not going to have access to management. So there is a point where we'll say, we can't model it any better than this, even though we see a pathway to model something better, we simply don't have the data. We would have to ask management some questions and we just don't have access to management. If we're looking at a mining company, for example, it's revenues, most mining companies are price takers, it's revenues are dependent upon uh, commodity prices. We're probably not going to have a very good forward curve of prices. Uh, that we can then uh, per quarter by quarter base our pricing off the forward curve. We're not going to have that kind of information because we don't have a commodity department that's going to give that to us. I'll get you 80% of the way there. 
Promise number two, no other CFA provider does or can provide this. We are the only ones with the applied level. I know that because I created it. We're the only ones who probably can do something along the lines of the applied level because markmelgram.com is the only one that actually has a practitioner that is doing this. I am active in markets all the time. I don't see uh, any anybody from any of the other providers that are active in markets. You can go to my YouTube channel. You can review the last two years of market outlooks if you want to know if I know what I'm talking about. You can go to Kaplan, you can go to any of the other providers and you can look for their market outlooks and oh, oh, you're not going to find any because they don't do it because they don't have practitioners. Uh, so no other provider can or will provide this for you. Not, not real world stuff. Well, they may introduce a financial modeling <clears throat> uh, um, module at some point in response to what we're doing, but they will be using manufactured data. I strongly doubt they have the skill set to attack the real world. CFA designation does give you a competitive advantage. Indicating markmeldrum.com uh, and or applied level with your level one, level two, level three standing uh, in job interviews does matter. Showing up with a financial model you built will make a difference. You're sitting in a job interview for financial analyst rather than them trying to figure out if you know what you're talking about you open up your laptop you spin it around you say i've done this i've completed the financial modeling module on markmeldrum.com in the applied level and we are going to have a certificate that says that you've done it but it will not be a certificate uh, uh, that you get simply by doing the module there will be an exam that will be um, uh, hosted by an online exam provider. Uh, and there will be a practical uh, element to the exam as well, where you will be given an S&P 500 company, and you'll be given one schedule, let's say the debt schedule, and you'll be given four hours. And you'll have to submit uh, a practical uh, application of some of your knowledge. You'll have to submit the debt schedule. You'll have four hours to do it. And this will be a pass fail on this one. This will be a grade. Now for this, unfortunately, there would be a cost on top of this because this is actually getting the certificate. Uh, the lowest price I've seen from an online auditor uh, and you need it done online. You need, you need a company that does this exam audits. You, otherwise it's worthless. You can't just throw it up on your own site and say, here, do this. You need it. You need an audit trail on this. Lowest cost I've seen on this is about 200 uh, US uh, to per per person writing. Uh, and this, I figure, probably get done for about 100 to have an expert review your schedule. Uh, so it probably will have an incremental cost somewhere, three, 350, somewhere in there. I'm not really sure yet uh, as we get closer uh, to the end of, uh, end of November, January, we'll set something up. Uh, so we'll be able to provide you with a certificate uh, if you want to. Uh, if, you, if you don't, uh, well, the um, financial modeling module is included in the CFA Plus. It is included in the applied level, and you can go through it for your own, for your own knowledge. But if you do want the certificate, it will be available. Um, as a CFA candidate or a CFA charter holder, this is a must-have. Uh, you have to know how to do this. Uh, in any interview you go to, if you don't know how to model uh, some of these things in Excel, uh, you will be at a significant disadvantage because the company will then have to train you and invest money in training you. Most CFA candidates do seek out a financial modeling uh, certificate uh, while they're doing their CFA program or after they're doing their CFA program. So we're going to throw it right in in your pathway so that you can do it all in one place uh, and in a, a more rigorous uh, more comprehensive way than you'll get done in other places. Uh, you must know what others don't. To have a significant competitive advantage, to have what they call on the street, to have alpha, you must know what other people don't, or even worse, you must know what others are unwilling to know. Even, even in the CFA program, uh, there are uh, many who really just want to get by. Uh, aren't looking to do any extra work. 
probably don't watch Bloomberg, have never traded a security in their life, uh, really just involve themselves in studying finance. They do not practice finance. This is what this will do. The applied level is practicing what you're studying in the CFA in the CFA side. There are many candidates who are un unwilling to uh, do anything more than the minimum they have to do to get by. And that is your advantage. Uh, so that starts September 9th. If uh, you are going to register for a CFA provider somewhere, hopefully that gives the advantage uh, to our side. Uh, if you're looking at other providers, ask them if they have a financial modeling module that is included uh, with their CFA subscription uh, that does go into the real world so that you don't then have to go out and spend money somewhere else. Is it included? If not, come and see us at the CFA Plus and starting September 9th, we'll have, it's about 12 to 16 weeks to get done what I need to get done on the first pass. And that's a first pass. Our second pass, which will start uh, January or February sometime, will be now that we've done it, let's run through some valuation models. And then we will uh, worry about our cost of capital at that time uh, and then determine, well, what's our numerator? Is it dividends? Is it free cash flow of the firm, free cash flow of equity? If you're a level two candidate, or have you been through level two, the equity section, all of those beautiful valuation models, we are going to use them. And that's it.